Well, good morning, YouTube friends. I hope you're all doing well and that you are enjoying life as we go along this journey. Today I'm on a mission to create some crackled tags and I'm wanting not to use a commercial crackle but rather to use a glue as the crackle medium. So let me show you what I have in store here. I'm going to use as the base just um, a piece of Amazon packaging. It was just a cardboard envelope that something came in. And I'm going to measure out the size of my tags. So on this one you'll see that I've measured out several tags. They're 6 centimeters by 11 centimeters. In fact, let me write that down for you so you can actually see. But obviously you could make these um, any size that you wanted to. And you could use this technique for making the cover of a journal as well because it's actually rather fun. The next thing I'm going to do is cut these out and then I'm going to round the corners. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, so just busy cutting the tags out quickly. I was going to do it on my guillotine, but because the cardboard is a little thicker, I thought let me just do it by hand because it'll wear out my blade less. And um, I'm not going to cut them all out. I'm just going to do a couple so that you get the idea. So... Um, make sure that you try and cut as straight as you can. An alternative to this, if you aren't someone that can cut straight, is just to be able to grab a metal ruler and one of your craft knives and put it on a cutting mat and cut like that. Another easy way. Right, so we're just going to work with these two. Um, the second one you'll see is slightly smaller. That was just because of the size of the card that I had. And I thought, well, why waste it? But I do want to work with them with different colors. So now I'm going to take my corner rounder. And I'm just going to line this up. And round off the corners. You don't have to do this. It's just something that I quite like in my journals. You can see I need to sharpen this. And if you haven't any idea how to sharpen these, just put a folded sheet of tin foil in there and punch through a couple of times that does the trick normally um, so if you've got any little tags that have hung on here but like a hangnail just trim them off with your pair of scissors right so the next thing that I'm going to do is to paint these with a base color so the technique here is is that you put down a color paint which could be something like a gold or it could be a white or it could be a red or a bronze it doesn't have to be painted beautifully because um, you're going to put a second coat of paint on top. So we're going to put down the base coat and I'm just using, um, these are Pebio acrylics which I really like but you could use any acrylic paint that's absolutely fine. Powder paints or tempera paints, they won't work so don't even try them. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is put on our PVA glue and I'm going to be using some of this Elmer's glue. I'm going to apply this fairly generously. Now the trick here is, if you want to have large cracks, you're going to put your glue on very, very thickly. And the less glue you put on, the finer the cracks will be. But there is a point where it comes to where you put it on so thinly that you won't get any cracks at all. So I'm now going to take my brush and I'm going to just gently, without dragging too much through this. I'm going to be more dabbing. Um, pull the paint so that it covers the entire surface and you will be able to see where the, sorry not the paint, the glue, you will be able to see where it is because of the shiny reflection but I'm trying to work towards having a fairly even spread on here because I don't want to have really really huge crackles on such a tiny little surface. If I was doing something big like a mirror frame I might want to exaggerate the crackles a little bit more. So I'm just lightly, almost just dragging the brush over the surface of the glue. And it'll be nice and tacky. If you're uncertain as to whether you've covered all the spots, tilt it to the light like this. You can normally see, oh, there's a little dot. I need to cover that. Or I need to actually just even out the glue a little bit. And you can keep moving it on your hand as I'm doing this, just so that you get your brush dragging through in a different direction. Obviously your brush strokes will start to even out this liquid. Alright, so I'm going to leave this one fairly generously covered like that. And I'm going to leave it to dry so that it gets to a tacky stage. 
so I'll put that one aside the next one I'm going to do is onto this coppery color and I'm going to do slightly less just so that we'll see once we start to crackle it what the colors look like and I'm doing exactly the same thing not dragging it but almost dabbing across the surface if that actually makes sense you'll feel it though because the glue does have a little bit of a drag to it because of its viscosity there we go and on this one you can see quite nicely the difference between the dry paint there and where the liquid has covered so nice and evenly less glue and don't worry if it's not 100% even um, you'll manage with that because the second coat of paint covers over the top so you're going to get a variation on crackle okay so if we have a look at the comparison of these two you can see that this first one was really thickly applied the second one less so so now on the gold I'm going to do an even lighter coat of the glue and one has to just as I say be very careful that you don't put so little on that nothing really happens right so let's do that just dragging it gently to the edges and you can see my brush is almost flat up against the surface it's almost lying parallel so that I'm not pulling it as you would do if you had it at 90 degrees here we go I think the the Elmer's glue is fairly widely available in most countries but in South Africa I did use a, um, a normal sort of PVA glue and it worked very well as well so you might just need to experiment a little bit we can always do a test run on the back of a cereal box if you want to check it out right so there we have the three and I hope that you can see nicely that even between the medium one and this that this is a slightly thinner layer I'm going to let those just dry off for a minute or two just till they can start to get tacky and you can see here that it's already starting to dry off it's a nice thing about this it does actually dry fairly quickly so let this dry off for a bit and I'll come back to you in a second so what you will notice that as the glue starts to dry and I don't know if you will be able to pick this up in the light you start to see slightly uh, well really tiny little bubbles forming in the paint it's just tiny little textured things here and unfortunately I think you're getting a lot of reflections so and maybe you won't see them but you can watch out for that and at this stage the red one is still pretty wet but the gold one is drying quite quickly so I'm going to start with that so I've chosen to work with a nice copper over that and I'm going to just put some paint onto my brush and I'm going to start to apply that over the surface so what we're wanting to do is to again brush this lightly over the top not drag it through because we don't want to disturb the glue underneath and the reason why this works is because the glue is drying at a different rate to the paint and it's going to cause a reaction the paints tend to dry slightly faster than the actual glue which is a bit sticky so I'm just going to drag this lightly and if necessary load a bit more on my brush I'm quite happy if the paint sort of fades out like that because I don't know that I want to have a solid color on the whole tag um, but we'll just see how we go and obviously you don't need to cover an entire surface you could just leave it slightly irregular as well but let's do this one to cover the whole surface just so that you see what that looks like have a nice cloth nearby so you can wipe your hands if necessary and I prefer to let these air dry rather than actually try and use heat tools I just find that the cracks get hugely exaggerated um, if you use a heat tool it will be fine on a large surface but for these ones I just feel it's going to make it too big so this stage you can see it's not covered beautifully but remember it is going to crackle and um, the idea here is that the gold is going to peek through the crackles so let me just wipe my fingers on the brush here oh, I don't know why I get so messy when I paint anyway have fun <laughs> the next one I think I'll do is let's do the white one because that was a really thin application of um, paint so we'll have white as the base and we'll put red on top 
and I'm doing these colors simply because they are strong contrasts and you will be able to see what is actually happening you could make these more subtle but it is ideal to have either a dark color at the bottom and a light color on top or a light color on the bottom and a darker color on the top if you've got colors that are really really close to each other in hue then you're going to find it very difficult to see the color contrast when the cracks start to appear okay so we've got that nicely covered there on the red let's pop that brush in the water and the next one I'm going to do is um, the copper one and I'm going to go over that with some gold there we go so again brush lightly brush almost parallel maybe 45 degrees to 30 degrees over the surface and just dragging that through there we go this one I'm not going to load with as much paint I'm quite happy that the paint will be slightly thinner up at the one end there we go let's set that aside so we've got our red we've got our copper we've got our gold the last one is the red card and for this one I'm going to put white paint on top and sorry this is just a new tube of paint I seem to go through white so quickly and I didn't realize it had a seal on give me a second just to undo this oh, quite a tight seal too here we go right so I'm going to take some white paint now remember that this first one, the red, we put the glue on fairly thickly. So we're going to have quite strong cracks and I want to therefore put this paint on slightly thicker than I have with the others. The white will always be a thicker paint in any case because they need to put a lot of pigment in to make it a white colour. So they use quite a lot of titanium dioxide um, and it's quite heavy. So it will actually make a mess. Don't worry if you're a neat freak. I'm going to clean my tubes of paint when I'm finished. <laughs> But I, I do tend to be a messy worker. Right, so let's get this one on. All the way to the edges. And these would be lovely to do as Christmas tags as well, or Valentine's with red and white, because you've got those lovely contrasting colours. Because this paint is so thick, I think I'm just going to brush it sideways. And then maybe down again, just so that we even it out slightly there we go that's nice and neatly colored right now we just have to wait a little bit so I will come back to you in a minute or two when I've cleaned up my fingers and my tubes and the paint has had a chance to dry so it's been about 10 minutes or so and you can see here that the red one that had the thinnest application of glue that one's starting to cry um, to dry quite nicely with the cracks and um, you can still see that quite a lot of the paint is wet because it's reflecting a lot of light so we'll leave that one aside this one had the second least amount and remember it's got the gold underneath and the copper on top that's starting to crack nicely this was red underneath and the gold on top this was the second most glue and that is starting to crack but um, it hasn't done its magic yet and then the white one it is starting a little bit here you can see in the corner just a tiny bit starting to crack but because the application of the paint and the glue was so much thicker it's going to take some time so I'll I'll come back to you when this is completely dry so you can have a look at the finished result so I've played around with some extra tags <clears throat> and these are just at the drying stage this one has red underneath and I've put white on top and you can see how oh sorry I'm out of focus you can see how beautifully these cracks are starting to form um, here I have a navy paint underneath and you can see the navy starting to come through there and then this one I had black underneath and you can see how nicely those cracks are coming so the brown ones that I've done with the umber paint are all a little bit different this one has gold underneath the very shiny areas are still where the paint is wet and this area is slightly drier this one I didn't put the glue all over the card I left some of it 
without glue so that I would get more of the brown um, and yeah some some cracked and some uncracked is what I'm trying to say this was also brown this one is still very wet but you can actually see that the cracks are starting to form through that and then this one has white underneath with the umber on top and that is again you can still see reflecting a lot of light so that is wet and then here's another one with the gold so I've done quite a few and yeah we'll just try on these uh, white ones that I've done here um, I used a different acrylic white just to see what I would do this is a Wilco which is one of the tester ones and it's a delicate chalk and I thought let me just see how different that is and this one you can see gives a slightly more irregular craze whereas the Pebio ones tend to give you a more sort of linear craze you can see those two so that's quite interesting that the brand of the paint has actually affected the way it is crackled although the mediums were applied the same way right so I will be back once they're all completely dry well <laughs> in my excitement I've now actually got the second batch that I did just simply because I couldn't resist it and let me show you the different colors <clears throat> this was white underneath with a burnt umber on top and it's given quite nice contrast there you'll see how the white paint pops through the umber where the glue has crackled it the rest of them are all gold with umber on top but you can see this one had quite a fine layer of glue on thin layer should I say and that's given you a nice crackle this had a thicker layer of glue and thicker layer of paint so you'll see that the lines that are created when the paint splits are more marked and then this one I did a very thin coat of glue on and I didn't put it all away so you can see here where the paint is stuck directly to the gold underneath but I quite like that because if you're doing a tag you've got a slightly lighter background that you can create something interesting with this one I decided to cross hatch the brush strokes that means I went down with some and then I just lightly dragged across the others and you can see how that has created a different crackle altogether and then these ones as I mentioned I used a different acrylic I used the white Wilco emulsion it was a delicate chalk just one of the little tester pots they're fairly inexpensive and this I had black acrylic underneath with this on top and this crackle is completely different to the Pebio one this one's given you much more sort of linear cracks and this one's crazed all over I think I kind of prefer this crack so obviously play around with your paints and just see what they do you could always just take the back of a cereal box put some glue down with the color underneath and then just try out all the different paints you have so that was black underneath and you can see that popping through and this is where I said you don't worry about painting perfectly underneath because it doesn't matter this was the blue the navy blue I like that it's a lovely soft color and that was the red underneath with the white crackle so I think that all in all um, I've got some really nice contrasts there for creating tags and I will show you what they look like when I finish them. Well, we've got to the end of making tags, and I hope you're going to enjoy this next section that I'm showing you. These were the tags that I'd made with the crackle and using the glue as a crackle medium. This one I've simply placed a piece of decorated paper on the back and a tag because I thought I could use it as a journaling tag. And this technique on this background paper is called stamping off. And I will link the video of how to make this paper um, in the description below. Then with a couple of the others with the darker backgrounds, I've made another little journaling card just using some butterflies and some space for journaling there. So keep it pretty simple. I've taken this one. This was, this was just a piece of off-cut paper, some images from Daphne's diary that I'd saved, and some splattered paper which I'd made on my own you can make that by putting it into a little misting bottle um, so keeping that also fairly simple here again using a crackled background I just used a bit of washi tape and some hand dyed fabric and this was a napkin that I put on with a bit of washi tape little mushrooms these were flowers that I had um, used a die cut to cut out of but I'd made them using till slips and I'll link that video below because that's actually quite fun and you get really nice um, colors sorry I'm not putting this in frame 
Um, there we go. This one had a white and brown background and I had made a piece of um, jelly printing paper with, uh, I'd used actually feathers to print with and I've just simply taken a little dove's feather and put that on top and I quite like that, it's nice and simple. This one here we had the gold as a base colour and then we used the glue as a crackle. This was some handmade paper with some frayed linen and just a nice little charm for that one. So again keeping it fairly simple and then the butterflies on the front with the handmade paper. This one here was a red underneath with the gold on top. I've splattered some white paint using um, the, the Delusion Shimmer Spray which has actually worked out quite nicely and then just using a paint marker I've just done some stitching around the edge. This was a napkin that I had put onto a book page and um, just some little images on there but again I'd splattered this just to soften it because it was quite a strong image. Um, I made a Christmassy one here. This was a white underneath with red on top and I softened the red by splattering some of this same dilution shimmer spray and then I took a piece of napkin and put that on top with a little sort of plush kind of image and some little things and this is just ribbon from the Lint Easter Bunny with a bell so that's actually quite nice and cheerful sorry I seem to have not got you in frame today my mistake right here was another one where the background color was again red with white this was the one where I put the paint on quite thickly so you'll see that I didn't get very huge marks there again a little um, fabric tie and then a piece of book page with some napkin on and just a few little images to tie that up this one had red underneath with white on top I love the way this has turned out and I've just used some a sentiment that I printed off the internet and I have um, stuck that on to a piece of Daphne's diary off cut page so I mean I keep little scraps and they're quite nice and colorful and then this one was a little stamped image onto a watercolor dyed um, a, yeah, it was a bus ticket I think yeah I dyed that and then I just mounted on a little bit of red paper and put some images there and then this one was where I actually used that Wilco paint where I got the larger cracks and it was the navy underneath with the white on top and I'm very happy the way that that's turned out and the other side this was just one of those coloring and book pages that would be quite fun because of the beads on here I don't want um, a bead texture on here so I could use a, a little glitter glue there or I might put a bead on the top here depending on where I'm going to actually use that and then the last one that I did um, it had the black as a base and then the Wilco paint which was the just those little tester bottles on top I've used a bit of crossword book page um, butterflies I'll link this video because I showed how to make lots of different butterfly ephemera on your own a bit of Daphne's diary a bit of wolf cut ribbon and then this is again the till slip where I'd stamped I had a um, frame cut out already because I die cut some things previously um, again a little crossword thing and just a little sentiment so I hope that's given you some ideas of things that you can do once you've actually crackled your lovely tags. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave comments in the description block um, in the comment section. If there are any specific videos you'd like me to do, then you can let me know. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for being with me. Bye for now.